a giant geyser of fire shoots out from the back of the ship, and shortly after that, there's another explosion, and the ship splits into two. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Recreating the Disasters. Today, we're focusing on the HMS Hood. So yeah, guys, let's get into the video. Alright, so here we have the hood in front of us, and as you can see, it is a very impressive warship. Now, Jay Killen's gonna give us a bit of history behind it. So, Jay Killen? Yeah, so the HMS Hood began construction at the John Brown and Company shipyard in Clydebank, Scotland, on September 1st in 1916. Following the loss of three British battle cruisers at the Battle of Jutland, 5,000 tons of extra armor and bracing were added to the Hood's design. Most seriously, the deck protection was flawed spread over three decks. The Hood was designed to detonate an incoming shell on impact with the top deck with most of the energy being absorbed as the exploding shell had to penetrate through the armor of the next two decks. The development of effective time delay shells at the end of World War I made this design much less effective as the intact shell could penetrate layers of weak armor and explode deep within the ship afterwards. In addition, she was grossly overweight compared to her original design, making her a wet ship with a greatly stressed structure. She was launched on August 22nd in 1918 by the widow of Rear Admiral Sir Horace Hood, a great-great-grandson of Admiral Samuel Hood, which the ship was named after. To make room in the shipyard for merchant construction, the Hood sailed for Rosyth to finish being fitted out on January 9th, 1920. With her conspicuous twin funnels and lean profile, the HMS Hood was widely regarded as one of the finest looking warships ever built. She was also the largest warship afloat when she was commissioned and retained that distinction for the next 20 years. Her immense size and powerful armament earned her the nickname of Mighty Hood and she eventually symbolized the might of the British Empire itself. The HMS Hood was ordered to the Norwegian Sea on April 19, 1941, when the Admiralty received a false report that the German battleship Bismarck had sailed from Germany. Afterwards, she patrolled the North Atlantic before heading into Scapa Flow on May 6. And on May 23rd, the HMS Hood then departed from Scapa Flow to intercept the Bismarck, which had then now been spotted by two other vessels. Alright, so that brings us up to where we are now, and we are going to be leaving, and we are going to make our way towards where the Bismarck has been spotted. Now, we're not going to be alone. Who else are we going to be with? And obviously, we won't be showing that ship in this video, but what ship was that? That would be the Prince of Wales. So yeah, that's correct. And not only will we be sailing with two ships, but the Bismarck is as well. And what ship is that? That would be the Prince Eugen. Now, this video will not cover the entire history of this battle. So I recommend you watch this video in the top right corner. That was what we used to do our research for this video. So let's go ahead and let's continue on our way towards Greenland and Iceland. Now, I should also mention that this is a relatively new ship to the game. It was recently added. Actually, I think Jay Killen and I did a video on this. So I'll put that video also in the top right corner if you want to check that out. But it does hold up today. It's got a lot of details on the ship and uh, I would recommend you check it out because it is very cool. Even for a person that's more interested in ocean liners, this is still a very interesting ship. So another reason just to check it out. Now it should be soon when we actually get to where we need to be, which is where the Bismarck should be located or where its proposed location should be. So uh, we'll see how this goes. All right, so at this point I've turned off my lights so we can be a little more stealthy when we enter the area where the Bismarck is supposed to be located. And I'm gonna go ahead and hand it over to Jay Killen to talk about this whole event. Yeah, so the British squadron spotted the Germans at 537 in which the ship's clocks were set four hours ahead of local time. The Germans were already aware of their presence as the Prinz Eugen's hydrophones had previously detected the sounds of high-speed propellers to their southeast. The British opened fire at 552 with Hood engaging Prinz Eugen the lead ship in the German formation, and the Germans return fire at 555, both ships concentrating on Hood. Prinz Eugen was probably the first ship to score when a shell hit Hood's boat deck between her funnels and started a large fire among the ready-use ammunition for the anti-aircraft guns and rockets of the UP mounts. So yeah, at this point, the Prince Eugen would actually be firing at us, but it doesn't really exist, it's sort of invisible because we don't have that ship there, but we do have the Bismarck and we do have the Hood, so we're gonna try our best to sort of recreate what's going on. So, I have fired, and the unfortunate thing is, and this is just one of the unfortunate things about Tiny Sailor's World and making these recreations, is that weather is unpredictable. We can sort of prepare our ships to go at a certain time, like we did here, but it doesn't really work out so well with weather. 
so none of our shots are going to be accurate whatsoever, which is really unfortunate. So I'm going to go ahead and, well, recreate the sinking using Sink by Simulation. One of the shells impacts the ship right at the back, and a fire erupts. This fire then ignites some of the magazines at the back of the ship, and all of a sudden, pretty much out of nowhere, a giant geyser of fire shoots out from the back of the ship, and shortly after that, there's another explosion, and the ship splits into two, and sinks V-Break style. Now, because we're in super shallow water, not like in real life, the ship just sort of sits here, and the bow begins to set down into the water, and eventually it goes under, so we're about to see that in just a minute. So there it goes, the hood disappears under the waves very, very quickly. What happened after the sinking, Jake Helen? How many people survived? Yeah, so out of the 1,418 people on board, only three people survived. Wow. So you can really understand how fast and how violent this sinking was for only three people to survive this sinking. So, yeah, really tragic. And the Bismarck actually was damaged by this battle, right? Yeah, so the Bismarck was hit three times by the Prince of Wales before retreating as the Prince of Wales also received some damage and some mechanical failures. One of these hits on the Bismarck contaminated a good portion of the ship's fuel supply and it caused some of it to leak into the ocean. So yeah, that's where we're going to leave it off. This sinking was probably one of the more dramatic ones we have done and it's amazing to think that the ship sank so violently and so quickly with that jet of flame shooting out of the ship and then that explosion that literally tore the ship in two. So yeah, very interesting and very good recreation with Sink by Simulation. So yeah, that is it. If you guys have enjoyed this, remember to leave a like and a comment, and I'll see you some guys. Goodbye.